Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about how you can use the log wheels in DaVinci Resolve to achieve amazing results with your log footage. Now let's get straight into it. As you can imagine, making these kinds of videos takes a lot of time. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can donate 1, 5, 10 or any amount of money to keep these kinds of videos free in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much and enjoy the tutorial. In the last part I made, I used the primary wheels to adjust our footage. Now, like I mentioned in that video at the end, the primary wheels are linear and because of that they have a few issues when adjusting log footage especially. You will lose a lot of detail because it will linearly push a lot of the image on the low end also up while you're pushing up the highlights. Now if we quickly reset these nodes, we will be back to zero and we go into our wheels section and go to the log wheels. Now you will see that the offset, which we've discussed before, is the exposure, will remain the same no matter which section you go into. But the other ones change. They go from gain, lift gamma gain to shadow, midtone and highlight. And they will become a lot more precise. And I will show you. So we have the same shot again. We want our exposure to be a little bit higher. And we want our shadows to be dark. As you can see, it's very selective and it creates such a punchy image compared to what we had before. Which will take your image from Rec. 709 with a little LUT. Looks fine, you know, looks cool. To much more punchy. I would take a little bit off of it now because it's a bit too much. But for illustration purposes, it gets a lot of impact in your image. You can do the same for the highlights. You want them to be a little bit more dark i would not recommend it because you can see it starts to really squish them down but you can really control how the highlights look they look soft or harsh you see so we want them to be normal because the normal amount looks quite nice mid-tone also you can see you can very much control the lighter areas of your image that are right below the highlights areas i can put it up a little bit now we went from this to this which is so much more punchy than using the primary wheels now to demonstrate for you how the log wheels actually work, I will explain it. So, what happens with log wheels is that they are not linear. And I will show you the difference here. So as I showed you before with the primary wheels, they are linear. Just like the exposure, you see that the line moves up linearly here on the scope. I'll put it on a bigger screen so you can see it properly. The offset always moves it up and down in a linear fashion. It moves the blacks equally as much as the whites as the middle part as any other part of the line. Now, with the log wheels, if you move the shadows, you'll see that something interesting happens. It curves at a set point over here. So if you move them darker, you'll see that it starts curving them. And that's a very powerful way to do it. So if you want to create a little S-curve, you can make it a little bit darker here. And you can make the highlights a little bit brighter or also darker if you want and then push the midtones a little bit now you see how that exactly works and if you want to adjust these points because they are set points you can use these two range up and range down this is indicated by the little arrow next to it so the down range is where it starts to curve off till black so like this it curves from here instead of all the way up there if you put it on zero and you can see the same happens with the curves for the highlights. Usually the range numbers are set pretty well, in my opinion, but it can differ very much per image. So zero here is absolute black, so the point will start to pivot from black. You see it doesn't adjust the image. And one here is absolute white, so if I adjust the highlights, you don't see them move at all. And that's so much better than using linear adjustments that don't keep in mind that you're shooting log footage. Now, for white balance, we can do the same thing. We can go in our offsets again. I will use the drag this time instead of the little numbers underneath, but I will slightly make it bluer. Be a little bit less. A little bit less red. Oh, I, now you can see it looks a bit better. And we want a little bit more blue in our low, like I said before. We will up the blue. And as you can see, it's very selective to the lower end. For the mid-tones, we want a little bit more warmth. We can add that just like so. And now we went from this to this, which is just a tiny adjustment, but it looks great. Now you can see how much more powerful the log wheels are compared to the primary wheels. 
Primary wheels are obviously great for easy and quick adjustments, and sometimes you want linear adjustments after your CST or LUT. So for example, you would add another node to make a little bit of an adjustment. I would much recommend for you to use the primary wheels because their linear chains actually works better in Rec 709. Using the log wheels, we actually upgrade this image so much. This is how the LUT looks like straight on the image, has a lot of dynamic range. Obviously you want that freedom still to adjust the image. You don't want a LUT to instantly throw everything to the max. That will make it hard for you to work with the image. What we did then is we adjust our exposure, which made it really punchy. We did a little bit of toning with our white balance. And you can see we took our image from this to this, this to this. Now you can see how much more powerful log wheels are. But there are some adjustments you might want to make that are even more precise than using the log wheels. For that we have the HDR wheels, which are a little bit more advanced, but man, they can be very, very useful. And I will show you that in the next part.